couple of years ago. I was hunting here with Grant. Grant tagged a buck we call Blind Eight. The same time of year, pre-rut. Blind Eight came in on this trail, cut through this little hidey hole, put a tag on him. This is just a known, proven location. And during the pre-rut, deer love to cruise this ridge, cut trails. There's a lot of trails coming together here to the south. So deer can come across this little saddle and go one way or the other. With a pre rut, remember. So every day more and more does are becoming receptive. Scrapes may start dying off and it's more effective for bucks to uh, just cut a trail to find a receptive doe. Now, yesterday morning our Moultrie Mobile was blowing up over here. Uh, there's a scrape on the edge of this little hole. And there was a group of does just working that scrape, leaving scent, collecting scent. And, you know, those scrapes are communication hubs. Multiple young bucks coming through here. And then about 11.30, if I remember right, just over my shoulder here on that trail I was talking about, big mature buck we call Big Sal. Big Sal's in the area. Uh, he was on camera yesterday afternoon just circling this this ridge. We're super excited to be in here this morning. Got a good southeast wind and the thermals are actually rising up this slope up here. So our scent's carried up and away from where we think deer are coming from. But we're just off their trail like, you know, 20 yards. And we call that thread the needle. And especially during the pre rut when, when bucks are cruising, really using their nose, trying to find a receptive doe. They're they're using that wind, they're cutting that wind, and if they're moving with that wind in their favor, when we're off their, their wind, just 20, 30 yards, deer feel very safe and secure. They feel like they're covering a lot of area, and we're right there on the edge of getting busted. And that is what we like when we're on these big, mature Ozark Mountain deer, but it's November. November 2nd. It's just too good not to be out here, so we're going to give her a go for a couple hours, see if we can get, get a buck on the ground.
sick. Oh my word, that's why we do it. It's 10 o'clock. About 9.30, I saw a bug cross up, up the road. Looked like a good bug, just barely saw him. Saw his feet, could tell he had antlers. And uh, I hit the ground call. Looked like he was going back to the northwest. We had a little yearling bug that was off to our side here. And when I grinded, he went up. I think he saw Big Sal and he went up. I checked him out. I kept eyes on him. Man, for like. 15 minutes and then all of a sudden I sat, I sat down so I could get a better look through look under the trees and all of a sudden I see him coming and when he hit a gap I knew it was old big saddle the buck we came in here to hunt he was just over my shoulder here on a Moultrie mobile yesterday at 11 30 or so made a big loop yesterday afternoon he was over at a little block we call high top and then at eight last night he was over on crossroads which is to my southwest over here so he made this big loop and we came in here looking for big sap and he responded to the ground call he was out looking out searching and he came in on a string and he was headed right to us. And I happened, I could hear something, I happened to look over, and a dome fawn came out of the food plot. And he spotted them, and they went to him, and he started grunting. And got behind him and pushed him just a little, and I got drawn back. And when he stopped, he was at 25 yards. One little limb between me and him. I'll be honest, I thought about it, but I couldn't pull the trigger on him. I couldn't risk deflecting that arrow. I want to take a clean, ethical shot on a deer, and I had to get on the bass, and he turned, and I never got another shot opportunity. But I'm calling that a success. We came in here looking for Big Sal, and we found him. We got him at 25 yards, pre-run, November 2nd. It's all about these bottlenecks. It does not get much better than that. But if a Mega Meat would have went through him, it would have been a lot better. All right, first things first. I am on the ground here, going in here, alright, now, this right here, that's where Right here was the thing protecting old Big Sal. And I'm sure glad I didn't pull the trigger because my eyes only picked up like one little stem. I think it kind of branched out. I thought I thought I saw two stems. And I'll be honest, I I was tempted, but I decided not to pull the trigger on him. And uh boy am I glad I didn't because look at this. few more stems than just what my eyes could pick up so <sighs> big sal lives another day another part of the story learned a little bit about him today but i didn't get to uh didn't get to harvest big sal but i'm definitely going to harvest this sapling this thing's going down Ah, 
There we go. That makes me feel a lot better. We'll be back in here soon after old Big Sal.